All right, it's uh, 7.06. I'll call to order the regularly scheduled meeting of the Beloit City Council. Uh, we're in the City Hall Forum on the 2nd of November. The first item is roll call. Roll call shows all seven City Councilors are present. All right, the next item is the pledge. If you please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this point, I would ask you, if you could, to remain standing for just a moment in honor of uh, Bev Nelson, who passed away uh, this last weekend. She, as you recall, was a longtime uh, City of Beloit uh, City Councilor, I think over a decade, in fact, of service uh, in two different stints uh, with the Council. And she'll be missed, uh, and, and her passing is a sad thing. But uh, if you give me just a moment and and then we'll proceed with the meeting. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, the next item is special order of the day and announcements. We have uh, one with Mr. Botts and some safe drivers. Thank you, Mr. President. The, uh, every year, the Transit Mutual Insurance Company, they're the company that insures our transit system, uh, looks at all the, uh, uh, basically the accidents that uh, get reported to them, but they also like to recognize employees who ha do not get accidents, which is always a good thing because, you know, the, the more of those that you have that don't, the better off your insurance premiums are. So uh, they look at, you know, one year, five year, ten years, and uh, we're quite fortunate to have uh, two individuals on our staff that have been very good drivers for uh, at least 20 years of accident-free service. And uh, someone asked, you know, how many miles that is, and we were trying to figure it out. And uh, it may be well over half a million miles that uh, this guy, these guys have driven without having accidents. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, have Phil Van Lanningham come forward. Phil and uh, Al Milton is the other driver who uh, was not able to be here this evening, but uh, these guys have worked for the uh, uh, transit for, how, you've been here about? I've been with transit for 23 and with the city for 30. Okay, and, and uh, having 20 years of accident-free service, I mean, we're very proud of these guys for doing the work they do. When, uh, when we were talking to them about coming down and doing this, and of course, you know, everybody's pretty humble about the service they provide to the city, and uh, Al's response was, well, that's my job. And so, you know, we, we feel proud to have individuals like these guys who work for us and uh, do the job they do. So we thought it was important to introduce uh, uh, Phil and then Al to the community for the service they do to the city. Well, thanks a lot. Ben. Appreciate it. I noticed the last name, Van Landingham. It's a good set of Dutch eyes, I think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, the next item is item number four, public hearings. 4A is a public hearing on a resolution approving the vacation of an unnamed north-south alley located between the 900 blocks of Johnson Street and Town Line Avenue in the city of Beloit and Rock County. It's before the council this night, tonight for a public hearing. There has been a review by the plan commission uh, with an approval of vote for approval 5-0. Ms. Christensen, can you give us the uh, staff report, please? Sure. The northern one-third of this alley was vacated in 1981. Um, this portion of the alley is unpaved and it's overgrown with grass, um, as, it, as was shown on the photo, which was included in your packet. Um, the east-west alley that is immediately south of the north-south alley um, will remain. Um, this petition was actually signed by eight of the abutting property owners. There are ten lots with frontage on the alley. One is a vacant lot owned by an adjacent owner, and one property owner did sign the petition. This has sent out, been sent out to all the review agencies, and AT&T, Alliant Energy, and Charter Communications requested a utility easement be placed over the entire vacated alley. Um, Plan Commission did review this item on October 21st and voted 5-0 to recommend approval of the vacation, subject to the condition that this utility easement um, remain over the entire vacated alley. Um, and my understanding is the intent of the property owners is just to put fences up back to the property line to um, use up that alley space that they've been having issues with people doing loud and activity behind their houses and they would really like to, you know, have that be part of their yards. And Planning Commission did recommend approval. 
All right, thank you, Ms. Christensen. This is a public hearing on the issue of a resolution approving the vacation of an unnamed north-south alley located between the 900 blocks of Johnson Street and Town Line Avenue. Does anyone wish to address the council on that issue? If so, please step forward. Again, a second call. Does anyone wish to address the council on a resolution approving the vacation of an unnamed north-south alley located between the 900 blocks of Johnson Street and Town Line Avenue? And lastly, does anyone wish to address the council on a resolution approving the vacation of an unnamed north-south alley located between the 900 blocks of Johnson Street and Town Line Avenue? I'll close the public hearing and entertain a motion to approve a, a resolution 4A. No Mr. Haynes, Mr. Forrest, any further council questions or discussion? All, right, all in favor signify by aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Very well, motion carries 7-0. Item 5 is citizens participation. It's an opportunity to address the council on issues that either will come before us this evening or might in the future. I haven't received any documents indicating anyone wishes to address us, but if you do, please step forward and give us your name and address. All right, seeing none, we'll proceed to item number six, the consent agenda this evening. The consent agenda consists of items A through F. Uh, all items listed under the consent agenda are considered routine and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a council member so requests, in which event the item will re be removed from the general order of business and considered at this point on the agenda. Do any councilors wish an item removed? Very well. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? I move that we approve the consent agenda. Uh, Mr. Second. Hench, Mr. Haynes. All right. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Those opposed? Very well. Motion carries 7 0. Next item is item number 7 ordinances. This evening we have ordinance 7A. Uh, it's a proposed ordinance to repeal. Now, here I'm going to earn my pay, I think, folks. Proposed ordinance to repeal and recreate section 14.01 to amend sections 11 through 16, paren 10, 14.014, 14.02, paren 1, 14.04, paren 7, 14.09, paren 6, 14.10, paren 2, 14.13, 14.14, paren 4, 14.17, paren 1, paren D. 14.17 paren 1 paren f, 14.19 paren 6, 18.02 paren 3, and 31.07 to repeal sections 14.08, 14.12, 14.14 4, paren 3 paren a, 14.15, and 14.8 to create sections 14.05 and 14.11 paren 5 of the Code of General Ordinances of the City of Beloit pertaining to licenses and permits. This is before the Council for a first reading. There is a request to suspend the rules and proceed to uh, action on the merits. Um, Ms. Krieger, I understand uh, uh, you are the author of most of this. Uh, can you give us a brief description of what we're doing here and the elimination of some regulations? Uh, yes, the city clerk's office has requested that we eliminate some of the licenses um, that are currently issued by the clerk's office. Uh, the licenses are available. I don't believe that we've issued them in the last 13 years. However, those are the metal detector license, the teen club license, dance hall, miniature golf course, bowling alley, and bill posting. Um, in addition to eliminating those licenses, we are uh, we took a, a general look at Chapter 14. Um, as we've done in recent past, we've been doing an annual uh, fee schedule for all the different fees that are assessed by different departments. And so to remove those fees from the ordinance itself and put it in that resolution, we took a, a look at all of 14 to get those um, references um, up to date. Um, in addition, we did some technical correcting. Um, there were a few licenses that we had adopted in a schedule under 1401. Um, we've taken those and put them into individual sections, and we uh, made some other clarifying um, changes. So that's all I have. All right. Are there questions uh, uh, that councilors have of Ms. Krieger? All right. Is, thank you. Is there a motion to waive the uh, procedures and uh, proceed to a second reading this evening? So moved. Right, Mr. Levy second. and Mr. Dench, all in favor signify by aye. 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 Those opposed? 
Very well. Is there a motion to seven zero? Is there a motion to approve the uh, ordinance seven uh, A? Second. All right, Ms. Alexander. Do I need to read all those numbers again? You do not. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. All right. All in favor, signify by aye. 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 Those opposed. Very well. Yeah, motion carries seven zero. Item number eight is appointments. There are none this evening. Item number nine is councilor activities and upcoming events. Uh, Mr. Noonan. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, last night I had an opportunity to attend uh, Councilor Bev Nelson's uh, visitation. It was very nice and it was, uh, uh, it was a great honor to uh, be one of the representatives from the city, hearing so many great stories from her family and citizens that were there uh, of uh, issues that came up and none were too big, none were too small, but she was passionate about each one and uh, she will be uh, greatly missed uh, and I'll miss her as well. Um, just wanted to um, mention that I had attended the Halloween parade downtown Beloit um, Saturday and saw all of the adorable children and lots of candy that was handed out by the businesses. Uh, the weather wasn't too bad. It was cold, but it wasn't rainy, so we dealt with it. So that was a great time this Saturday. And wanted to also congratulate uh, Mr. Wallendahl and the cast and crew from Dark of the Moon at the high school. Uh, they finished up another great performance and wanted to congratulate them for pulling it off. That's all I have. Mr. Haynes? Nothing to add to that. Mr. Levy? Nothing. And Mr. Dench? Well, I would also like to uh, make mention of the passing of Councilor Bev Nelson, former councilor. Her last year on the council was my first year on the council, and the two of us sat together down at that end where Councilors Noonan and Johns are sitting now. And uh, she and I had a, a marvelous time in that, that short period of time that we worked together. I will miss her very much, and I certainly uh, uh, c keep her family in my thoughts and hope that uh, they're able to cope with her loss, too. I know they're going through a particularly trying time, and I certainly hope they find the strength to, to deal with it. All right, Mr. Forrest. <laughs> I would like to thank the city's bargaining units for the agreements that they reached on behalf of the city and the residents here to make sure that we can maintain the quality level of services that we have. So I wanted to personally thank them for the sacrifices they have made. Um, I would like to uh, add my congratulations to Phil and Al for their 20 years of accident-free driving. It's quite a wonderful accomplishment. And I just have to say thank you for whoever finally got us paper cups instead of styrofoam. Thank you. The little things matter. And I, I have no comments uh, this evening. Uh, item number 10 is city manager, manager's presentation. Apparently there is none tonight because we have quite a few reports from <coughs> boards and officers under subsection 11. Uh, 11A is a resolution releasing restricted access along a portion of Gateway Boulevard. Mr. Casper or Mr. Arft, I'm not sure which one is going to. Mr. Casper could right. probably provide a brief overview of that. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you. The, uh, the, the matter that uh, the President has called is, is closely intertwined with uh, 11B, the resolution regarding a stipulation and settlement. And I provided a single staff report uh, for both items. But very briefly, back in uh, May of 2009, uh, this Council passed a resolution uh, restricting access along certain portions of the newly uh, 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 constructed area of, of Gateway Boulevard. Um, earlier, uh, uh, or later on uh, this year, uh, the, uh, the city uh, was named in a lawsuit filed by the owners of uh, what are commonly known as the Hector and Long uh, parcel. Uh, the suit was filed in federal court naming the city and uh, the counselors individually. Um, and uh, there had been discussions uh, almost since the inception of the lawsuit uh, aimed toward uh, a resolution of the matter. Uh, counsel uh, was briefed uh, on uh, the proposed uh, settlement that had been tentatively arrived at between the parties subject to counsel approval. Uh, they were briefed in a closed session back in October. Uh, earlier October uh, 5th of this year, just about a month ago. Uh, the same uh, settlement that was uh, suggested uh, and reviewed at that meeting is what the, uh, the, the parties have 
shaken hands on, if you will. Uh, it's the same written agreement you saw that evening. Uh, I have facsimile signatures from all of the plaintiffs at this point. I don't have the original signed document back. It's still contingent upon your action here tonight. The settlement agreement uh, uh, has, uh, I think, three major points in it. Uh, we agree to rescind the resolution restricting access that was passed back in May. We also agree to pay uh, uh, an additional $25,000 uh, to uh, all of the plaintiffs, uh, uh, a single sum of 25000 to be divided in some fashion among them. And uh, they, in turn, <coughs> give uh, uh, the city and each of the consulars a full and complete release, uh, d which includes a dismissal of the federal action uh, with prejudice, which, which is merely a, a, a legal way of saying it can't be brought again in federal court. Uh, in addition, they release any other type of action they may think they have, whether an additional action in federal court or more likely a further action in state court, uh, uh, say, say a claim for, for value uh, that we paid. Uh, they cannot bring that, uh, assuming the council approves and enters this settlement. It is, it is a, a full and global and, and complete release. Um, and uh, I, I guess I would point out that the lawsuit in, in federal court, while our private council thought that uh, uh, more likely that that would be dismissed and end up in some sort of a state uh, uh, court setting, uh, they were seeking uh, not only an unspecified amount of compensatory damages, but they also uh, asked for punitive damages and actual attorney's fees. Uh, this would put an end to, to all of that. And, and uh, I, both uh, the outside counsel uh, who we retained and, and my office and, and, and manager's office uh, feels that this would be the proper and prudent thing for counsel to do. I, I would ask, as you vote to, and consider on this, that you consider the approval of the stipulation first, item 11B. The stipulation actually calls for the rescinding of the resolution. I, 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 it would be anomalous for us to approve the rescinding of the prior resolution and then possibly not approve the settlement. I think the settlement should be considered first if, if the president doesn't mind uh, honoring my suggestion. I, I'm open to any questions anyone may have. I think that would make me a more logical method uh, to proceed uh, first agreeing to enter into the stipulation and agreement and that's one of the terms of that is vacating the restrictions. So, yes. All right, are there questions of uh, Mr. Casper on either resolution A or B? 11 A or B? Yes, I, I would have one, Mr. Casper. Uh, this this uh, resolution and, and stipulation and settlement agreement as I read it, contained nothing in terms of restricting the city in the future from exercising its various regulatory powers over the remaining parcels of land. We are not tying our hands or council's hands in the future. Uh, they will still have to approve whatever uh, development or whatever other activity uh, takes place on these remaining parcels. Is that correct? That That is correct. In fact, that was the probably the most uh, uh, challenging part of the negotiation. They wanted to ensure that we wouldn't uh, uh, enter into the settlement, get the release, and then reimpose the same restriction. Uh, and the settlement does uh, provide that we won't reimpose the same uh, restriction, but does give us a clear hand in enforcing the same terms and conditions that would be applicable to any other landowner. All right. Thank you. I have no other questions. Any other counselors have any other questions or comments? All right. Well, I think uh, procedurally then we'll, we will jump ahead and we'll consider 11B, a resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into a stipulation and settlement agreement regarding Gateway, Gateway Boulevard litigation. Is there a motion to approve 11B? I'll move to approve 11B. All right. Ms. Ms. DeForest and then Mr. Dench. Any further counselor questions or discussion on 11B? I'll call the question. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Those opposed? Very well. Nay. Motion. I'm sorry? Nay. Nay. All right. Motion carries 6-1.
11A is a resolution releasing restricted access along a portion of Gateway Boulevard. Uh, we've heard the report by uh, Mr. Casper. Are there any other counselor questions or comments on 11A? All right, is there a motion to approve 11A? I would move that we approve 11A. All right, Mr. Dench, Second. Mr. Levy, uh, any further counselor questions or discussion? All right, all in favor signify by aye. 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 Those opposed? Very well, motion carries 7-0. 11C is a resolution approving the 2010 to 2014 consolidated plan, annual action plan, and community development block grant budget. Uh, there is a recommendation uh, that's come through the Commun Community Development Authority, uh, recommendation for approval. Uh, Mr. Gregg, can you give us the staff report, please, sir? Yes. Before you tonight is a resolution that approves the, uh, as you mentioned, the Community Development Block Grant Program, the allocation plan, the annual action plan, and then the consolidated plan, which covers a five-year period. So this year, our block grant review included those three documents. Um, the numbers that are before you in terms of the allocation are the same that the Community Development Authority recommended at their meeting in the end of September and that was presented to the Council uh, early October and also at the public hearing two weeks ago. And uh, there, there haven't, although there were a few comments last time, there haven't been any changes to these numbers. It's still the recommendation of the staff and the Community Development Authority to allocate the funds as listed. Um, we went down the list last time, so unless there are specific questions, um, it's basically the same as we presented last time. All right, thank you, Mr. Gregg. Uh, is there a motion to approve? Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Ms. DeForest, I didn't see it, thank you. Um, yeah, I had a question in uh, the, the plan that was attached on our last packet, the pages don't match up, so forgive me, the pages I have indicated don't match up, but under the other narrative section um, where the specific objectives are identified, there's no reference to the priority that the CDA established to providing rental assistance, utility assistance, foreclosure prevention, and credit financial counseling um, in terms of keeping people in their homes or helping them be rehoused in homes. Can we make sure that, that language is reflected in that section? And then also, um, uh, there is uh, on page 21 of the document, the homeless strategic plan response. Um, there isn't made mention of um, the priority for housing assistance for renter populations. So if we could take a look at that. I'd sure. Appreciate it. Um, we can add those things there. I did chat with the uh, Community Development Director a few minutes ago. There, there, is, a sec cause, uh, there is a section uh, that is on the document that you have in your packet tonight that begins on page four called Strategic Plan, okay. bottom page four. And it asks, a couple of general questions that we have to answer in the narrative. One of them is to describe the basis for allocating the funds, essentially. Mm -hmm. And our answer included, uh, you know, public comment, uh, primarily serving minority and low-income populations, and also the target neighborhoods. Uh, we discussed that that might also be a logical place to put the CDA goals. Um, exactly. Just for the benefit of the rest of the council, other than Councilor Noonan who knows this, but the Community Development Authority uh, did identify three priority areas that Councilor DeForest just mentioned uh, that was used in their consideration and review. So uh, we would be happy to include that and if it's okay with Councilor DeForest, maybe that section would be the appropriate section to put that in. And then we can put the other comments in and the homeless section you mentioned. Can I ask a related question? Sure. Um, so given that, that those were the priorities, the preferences identified by the CDA, um, is it your sense that the, the funding decisions that were made for the public service dollars were in keeping with those priorities? <laughs> I think that it's always a tough choice, as you know. There's way more in requests than they have to give out, and I know, I think the CDA did their best to keep those in mind. Um, keep those in mind or, or utilize them? Because we, we've we funded uh, some programs with large amounts of money that have nothing to do with rent assistance, utility assistance, right. foreclosure prevention, and financial counseling. Well, again, it, uh, they were most of the programs that we funded were programs we funded in past years, so it's also very difficult to stop funding a program as well. Um, I think uh, since this was the first year that the CDA had those goals, I think if we could, you know, perhaps move towards a more uh, 
strict interpretation, if you will, of what they mean. Uh, but again, it's really um, the CDA and the counselor's decision on that. I don't want to put you on the spot, right. Councilor Noonan, but you were there, so. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, well, it's very, very difficult, and uh, I know Councilor DeForest knows it very well. You know, it, uh, it's very tough, and others that have served on that. Every single one that comes before the commission, uh, you would like to fund fully, if not more. Uh, there's some uh, very, very tough decisions that have to be made, and none of them are easy. There's a lot of vigorous debate during it. Uh, the, the numbers weren't popped in. Uh, there were initial recommendations, then we changed uh, some, and, uh, and others, you know, um, certainly took into consideration all those issues and, and uh, tried to do the best they possibly could with very limited resources. But certainly their, their intentions were to follow that, I believe, and to take care of the majority, the, the maximum number of possible people in the community. All right, additional counselor comments or questions? All right, is there a motion to approve uh, uh, 11C? All right, Ms. Johns? Second. Mr. Noonan? Additional counselor questions or comments, if any? All right, all in favor signify by aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. Very well, motion carries 6-1. Item number 11D is a resolution approving the 2010 Home Investment Partnership Budget. Uh, Mr. Gregg, can you give us the staff report? Thank you. Uh, similar to the block grant, these are the same numbers that you've seen now for uh, over a month. Uh, the city also receives home dollars as part of the Rock County Home Consortium and we're proposing to use our share for our housing rehabilitation loan program. In addition, uh, we uh, allocate money, the consortium allocates money to uh, neighborhood housing services and they're proposing to use a portion of their funds uh, for um, down payment assistance and the balance for their owner occupied housing program. And again, this was before you for a public hearing at your last meeting and uh, my recollection is there were no, no comments from the public at that and so these are the allocation plan that the CDA recommended and that the staff recommended. All right, thank you, Mr. Gregg. Are there any questions of Mr. Gregg? Is there a motion to approve 11D? Move to approve. All right, Ms. Johns. Second. And Mr. Haynes, and any additional counselor questions or comments? And I'll call the question. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Those opposed? Very well, motion carries 7-0. 11E is a resolution approving the 2010 Business Improvement District Plan and Budget. Ms. Bratz, can you give us the staff presentation, please? Absolutely. Um, what you received in your packet were uh, various documents. Uh, the resolution is to approve the operating plan, which includes the budget for 2010 for the Downtown Beloit Association, and we do manage Business Improvement District. Um, property owners within our district contribute about 47% of our total budget through their assessment, which is a special assessment. They each pay $3.88 per thousand in assessment on their property. Now, if the property is over, say, $774,000, um, it'll cap out at $3,000. So if it's a $3 million property or parcel, it will still be at $3,000. Um, so 47% is all of that put together, which in, it amounts to about $129,000, $693. Um, the remainder is of our budget assets and revenue is covered by sponsorships, fundraising, savings and investments. Um, and um, really there isn't, you know, we have $47 million of property in our district and, um, you know, the programming that we provide, we also included our work plan for you, um, is still the same. We have not scaled back. We're determined to continue the programming that we offer our district on all levels, the four-point approach through our Main Street programming that we offer to um, solidify and promote and continue the momentum of economic development in our downtown. Um, we have included an addition of um, managing the um, tax incremental district number five grant programs that we now look over. Um, we cre helped create last year and we have a team that helps 
manage those, which is, and we thank you for allowing us to do this, which is our facade program and our upper floor housing program. You also had a document in your packet that talked about that and the successes of that, um, which I'm happy to um, speak further on, but I want to be very quick for you if you have any questions about our budget. All right. Mr. Levy? Just a couple of questions. I know you have a lot of activities uh, downtown, uh, good activities. I've been to several of them. But my question is, do you have any sense of what kind of return that's bringing for the various businesses that's down there? Um, are, they, are they seeing some kickback from all the activities that you're having down there? You know, we can talk anecdotally about quite quite a few of them. I mean, we have if we talk about our events and promotions, they are balanced between retail-driven promotions and events, which includes businesses. Uh, if you think about Holidazzle, which is coming up December 11th, mark your calendars. <laughs> uh, if you talk about Holidazzle or Art Walk, these are events where we intentionally drive people through the doors of the businesses and they can calculate I had 400 people come through my doors and then they um, have the opportunity to create the experience that will end up becoming a sale down the road the road, whether it's tax preparation or whether it's retail. Um, we also have events like our 22-week farmer's market where we bring thousands of people downtown every single week. And our businesses have the opportunity to promote themselves and to encourage people to come through their doors. Um, and it's a different promotion because it's specifically targeted for community, it's social, it's about recognizing that downtown is the place to be. So whether, you know, a business is, is really looking to translate that into dollars, they all make the most of that themselves. So we're bringing the people down and then they turn that into something else. If we talk about facades, um, what you have seen in this district in the past year as far as our facades have, have been concerned, and this is um, because of the TIF, um, dollars that we've put toward our, towards our grant financing, um, we've seen an, an, an economy that is, you know, just struggling, we've seen a lot of momentum. I mean, you guys know that we've seen a lot of momentum in our downtown. We're in 21 years of this organization, and um, as the economy started to still, we were able to infuse it with dollars and continue to see improvements. And just so you know, for the tax incremental financing uh, district number five, uh, for facade grants, we have a return. We have a return as, as a district of every dollar that you've given us to invest, we've got two dollars back. And that's encouraging neighbors to look at their property and to step outside their doors. And, and there is, all of these are economic drivers. There's small increments that all play on a bigger picture of the return dollar in the hands of the business downtown. Okay. Um, then one more question, but I got to say this before I ask the question. The president just told me don't use the term kickback. He said yeah. that's a bad term. So. Those, those, those <laughs> one in Chicago, they didn't <laughs> want uh, <laughs> The question, the other question that I have is, if we have business downtown that may be struggling in some shape, form, or fashion, do we assist them in trying to keep them down there where we're not losing any businesses down there? Absolutely. One of the things that we've always done is business consulting. Um, if, if a property owner or a business owner uh, comes in and talks with us, we do our best, and it's confidential, so we don't talk about it openly. Um, we do our best to help them in any way we can, whether they're struggling or not. If they want to try something new, um, we provide the best resources we have. And I appreciate the, the question, too, because one of the things that we launched this year is our website. It's a new website, and if you uh, go to www.downtownbelight.com and you click on resources, there's a variety of resources that help businesses, whether they're entrepreneurs entrepreneurs starting out or whether they are on the other end of the spectrum and they're really having some challenges and they need to um, understand how to write um, their the business model or their business planning and financing. And um, we've also integrated through Vision Beloit, the partners um, have included um, Bud Gayhart from the UW uh, Whitewater um, Small Business Development Center. Um, as you know, we have um, put together the four uh, agencies, a series, a business um, seminar series that took businesses, anyone in our district, and we promote it to our district, but 
happen in the community from the pro through the progression of a business. And, and we took um, topics that he's talked on each month. And so we're going to continue that. He's also in our office um, to consult one-on-one -on -one with businesses as well. We also have the resources through Main Street, which is the department in the Department of Commerce um, that we uh, work very closely with for technical assistance. We have J J.D. Milburn, who is the business specialist in that department as well. So um, anyone that reaches, you know, we do outreach, and then, you know, there's also the hand-in-hand -hand. when people come to us, then we know that we can kick into gear and start helping them, and we try to find the right fit. Okay, thank you. Right, Mr. Forrest? I have a follow-up question. So are you doing retention visits um, in addition to the ones that are already being done by our Economic Development Department, or? The, the Economic Development Department has been doing it citywide, and they mm -hmm. have a system that they've developed, program that they've developed this right. past year. Retention is always something that we're working at, and we have this sort of microcosm um, in our downtown. And we had a more formal uh, retention visit plan that, that we could sort of reinitiate, but we are always downtown reaching out and talking to business owners and um, we spend a great deal of time there. We sort of sit in the center of it, and and it's you know through social interaction as well as as going door to door and talking with them. When it's our events, we're always doing outreach and communication with them. There's a newsletter that's coming out soon, um, and um, a lot of our things that we hand out, we're we're in the doors of the businesses often. Um, so um, can we do better? We always feel like we can. You know, we can be in more doors more often. We have. Uh, around 200 businesses downtown. Mm -hmm. So getting to them and having that quality time, we, we want to promote the ability for them to reach out to us as well so that we can target and prioritize the need. Okay, and then also just for public information, the assessment fee has not increased. It has not level. increased. Okay. Thank you. Um, it has been stable for um, it, the exact same uh, level for three years. And it's been stable for the past 21 years. When we started out 21 years ago, um, right now we're at three dollars and 88 cents per thousand. Started out at three dollars and 21 cents per thousand. Thank you. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> I'd like to continue with that line. Uh, so um, this is the only uh, bid district that we have where there is a special assessment uh, on the property owners, right? And. Uh, as Councilor Levy, Levy was alluding to, it's a very difficult uh, economic time right now. Is it uh, optional for the property owners to uh, opt out of the special assessment? No, it's not. I took a point to make, Eric. I mean, it's Councilor Newnham. I'm sorry. Um, it's a good point to make. It isn't. It isn't. It's something that is a collective investment. Um, by all the property owners in the district and the investment overall the approach that we have is comprehensive and it is to maintain property values as one of our um, ultimate goals and we have done that over the years um, I believe we are at a 9% growth per year over 21 years um, it's a foundation of success and it's proven to do quite well for Beloit uh, certainly it's come a long way over the last 21 years many people's efforts and some of the, the uh, uh, auditorium here tonight, uh, Andrew Yonke, for those who can't see uh, as well. Uh, now, the district is getting close to closing out in another two or three years. Uh, the do you feel that we will be tax incremental to... district number five, That's yes, right. which is different from our business improvement district. I just want to say that for the public. Do you feel that we'll be able to uh, finish most of the projects that we had set out to do in that time period and retire it in that time period? Um, there's always more to do. We all know that. Um, we are so grateful for this. Um, what we have seen uh, with the money that has come forward, and, and we have two projects, as you know, the grant programs, upper floor housing. We've awarded a, an upper floor housing project already. I don't, that was in your packet, um, but I think it's worth mentioning again. Uh, we have awarded all of the money for facades. Um, there are five buildings, 80% uh, of them, four out of five, are being fully restored. You know preservation of the buildings, returning them to their natural, um, original architectural integrity, and um, will we be able to uh, reach all of them? I'm sure we won't, but you know, I know that what we've done this year has had a tremendous impact, tremendous impact, um, and uh, what we're going to be able to do with the money allotted in the next three years is um, going to do that much more. And really what we've seen is private investment as well without um, uh, some of it is, you know, I, th I think it's a, 
spurs people to think about their property and even if they don't take advantage of the 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 grant program we're seeing some additional investment in the district that isn't even related to it oh and then just one last thing i back up a little bit as a popular a possible stimulus uh, or business retention program, have you considered making it optional for the property owners uh, in their special assessments? Um, this is defined by Wisconsin statutes in a business improvement district, and so it doesn't allow for an option, option out, opt out. Um, and it's been a collective um, investment for all property owners within the district for the past 21 years. And um, this is no different from what they've seen for many years. And, and um, so it's, it's not an option. I, I understand why that might be asked, but it's not. Thank you. All right. Uh, I'll entertain a motion. Unless there are any additional counselor questions or comments, I'll entertain a motion to approve 11E. I move to approve. Right. Second. Ms. Johns and Mr. Haynes. Haynes. Haynes oh, also I'm said sorry. something too. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Haynes. Haynes. Yeah. Um, uh, all in favor signify by aye. 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 All those opposed? Very well. Motion carries 7 0. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Bratz. 11F is a resolution amending the existing collective bargaining agreement and authorizing a new one year agreement between Be City of Beloit and the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, Local 643. Mr. Arft. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. As we've discussed on numerous occasions, the 2010 budget cycle was certainly uh, the most difficult and uh, most complex, I think, that we've undertaken, uh, certainly in the years that I've been in Beloit, one of the most difficult of my career. Uh, we had a lot of issues to deal with in this budget, and it became very clear uh, early on that we stood a little chance of getting the general fund into balance uh, and with, without dealing with either one or two of uh, two options. First of all, we either had to renegotiate these labor agreements that provided for a 2.5% salary increase this coming year, or we were going to be faced with significant service rollbacks, uh, employee layoffs and other cuts to get the budget into balance. Uh, we opened negotiations with all five of the city's collective bargaining units uh, earlier this summer. Uh, as soon as we understood the magnitude of the problem in the budget, uh, we had a very good initial meeting with the group uh, of all of the bargaining representatives. Uh, that was followed by a series of individual meetings where we discussed a whole uh, uh, the list of issues and options and alternatives that were brought to the table. Uh, we were uh, able to put together, uh, with their cooperation, uh, a renegotiated contract package that has the following primary components. Number one, uh, we have a, a proposal before you in, these, in this and the subsequent resolutions to freeze salaries uh, at their current level for the year 2010. All of the 2009 salary schedules that are in the collective bargaining agreements will be carried forward and used for one additional year. Uh, number two, we have given the bargaining units a no layoff pledge, uh, particularly the AFSCME units. It's actually worded as a no layoff pledge. But the city has also reserved the right to evaluate vacant positions, make a determination as to whether or not the position should be filled, and if so, with a part or full-time employee uh, and or how the position should be redefined or reassigned if a vacancy occurs. So all of the city's management rights to evaluate vacancies, rewrite job descriptions, and fill them based according to the needs of the corporation are preserved. Uh, number three, uh, we've put a provision into all of these agreements that we will not alter uh, the city's basic health care uh, benefit program uh, for its employees for 2010 and 2011. Uh, we've, uh, we're in the process of selecting a consultant. We're doing a lot of auditing of claims, and we're doing a lot of analysis of the program. We're going to be embarking upon a major study uh, looking at future options and alternatives for how we provide group health care benefits, and all the collective bargaining units have been made aware of this. Uh, so we will be doing some things in 10 and 11 regarding auditing claims possibly doing some re-education of our uh, program participants, 
uh, uh, doing an enhanced wellness program next year, maybe even some renegotiations uh, with our uh, preferred provider network or our, our TPA, but not making any basic structural changes until 2012. Um, those are the primary components of the first resolutions dealing with APSME. The resolutions dealing with the public safety bargaining units, the police and fire uh, units um, uh, contain a specific commitment of manning level because the no layoff language doesn't quite work there. We either have X amount of firefighters or we have X amount of police officers and we've made a commitment to maintain the current manning level for the next two years and obviously any vacancies that occur during those two years will be filled as quickly as we can going through the normal recruitment process. Um, two significant deviations, I guess, in, in how all of these resolutions came together. Uh, first of all, the police officers were very concerned about their salary increase in 2011 and, and, and how a two-year pay freeze would impact their future pension benefits and the accrual of those benefits, which is based on an average of salary, the highest three years of salary during your tenure of employment. So they wanted to accelerate the pay increase and get it on January 1 of 11 rather than December 15. In order to do that, they offered to prepay for that 2011 raise. And both of the police locals are giving up their VIVA, which is a health savings account type of instrument contribution that the city makes each year on their behalf. And they're also giving up their uniform allowance for the year. And the combined total of those two givebacks in 2010 equals about $90,000. That's actually been pulled out of the police department budget and appropriated as a reserve account and uh, will be available as fund balance next year and will show up in the budget as a fund balance allocation to prepay for that raise. But in mid-December of 2012, when all of the raises are executed, all of the employees will have received the same 2.5% raise. Uh, the internal equity uh, of the pay plan will have been preserved, and in essence, the, the agreement is equitable for all of the bargaining units. And of course, the non-represented employees are being treated in a similar fashion, as you'll see later in the evening. Now, there's one other anomaly here that I wanted to talk about, and that has to do with police supervisors. Uh, counselors will recall that we, we ended up in an extended bargaining session with the police supervisors over their basic three-year contract for 8, 9, and 10, 2008, 9, and 10, and we never approved that contract. So there are two resolutions here tonight related to the police supervisors. The first one approves their three-year contract for 8, 9, and 10, the way it was negotiated. The second contract amends 2010 to provide for the pay freeze and the other items we've discussed, and then uh, provides for a one-year contract for 2011. All of these were done that way. The state statute only allows for a three-year contract. So in every case, we'll have an amendment of the existing collective bargaining agreement for 2010, and then we will have a new uh, contract, a new one-year contract for 2011. And then in 2012, all the collective bargaining agreements will be open for renegotiation at that time, and a decision then will be made as to whether they're going to be two or three-year contracts. But three is the longest period of time you can go. Uh, those are the, are the key points related to the collective bargaining agreements. As we discussed earlier, there were a couple of minor, at least we considered minor, uh, issues with police and fire that were provided as well as part of the negotiating process. I want to also emphasize there were a lot of issues that came up during the negotiations that we rejected. Uh, the ground rules we laid down is we would not do anything that altered the basic collective bargaining agreement and nothing that had a long-term economic impact for the city, like adjusting vacation schedules or adding more floating holidays uh, or paid holidays would be considered during the renegotiation. And we were, we were limiting it to just uh, the key issues uh, that were presented at the table. I want to add uh, uh, also, as I did in each of the resolutions, a statement of personal thanks uh, to all the collective bargaining units and to the employees they represent. Um, uh, they had firm contracts. This was not a, a normal uh, open contract negotiation. They had firm <coughs> contracts, contractual commitments for 2010. Uh, their willingness to consider renegotiating that, accepting a pay freeze, uh, is huge. The, the total cost savings for the city just in this one year is about $650,000, about 400 and some thousand for the general fund alone. And the 
the savings over the two years is in the magnitude of $1.2 million. Uh, this is a huge concession. Um, the uh, citizens certainly owe these bargaining units a, a, debt, a debt of gratitude. Had this not been done again, uh, the city would have had no choice but to go in, make deep service cuts, employee layoffs, facility closures. There simply would have been no other choice. So I want to add my expression of appreciation as well to all the bargaining units. Uh, this is indicative, again, of the professional level and quality of our staff that these individuals were willing to make this concession this year. And with that, Mr. President, if any of the counselors have any questions about any of the collective bargaining agreements, I'll be happy to answer those, and then we can proceed with them one at a time. I, I would have one question, uh, Mr. Arf. Um, and, and this perhaps is the sort of a question that's uh, unanswerable. But there's nothing in the language other than the uh, promise to keep the health care issue the same. Uh, how would it be, that issue be impacted if the national government were to get its act together and implement some sort of a uh, health care reform or some sort of health The devil would undoubtedly be in the details, and you probably can't comment. But No, I can't comment but, definitively. I don't know enough about There are two, uh, two bills active now in Congress. Uh, a big part of the bills is regulatory in nature, regulating, uh, regulating private insurance companies and, and placing standards on uh, people and companies for how you have to get insurance. Uh, there's also a provision there to provide a government-run uh, health insurance program as well. Uh, I don't think anybody knows how that's all going to come out. Uh, we'll just have to play it by ear, whatever is adopted by Congress, and I think they likely will adopt a health care bill this year. Uh, obviously, we'll go through it very carefully and see if there's anything there that would be advantageous or useful uh, for the city. Okay. Additional counselor questions? Ms. DeForest? Um, I just wanted for a point of information for the public um, to clarify and asking for resolution H, it has to do with the firefighters bargaining agreement that the concession was made to give up a residency requirement. Is that correct? Uh, no, that's not precisely correct. The current residency standard for firefighters is that they must live within 25 miles of the city hall, the city of Beloit. There is no requirement for them to live in the city of Beloit. Uh, during the negotiations, one of the issues they asked about was to extend the 25-mile radius to 50 miles to accommodate one, I think one, possibly two of their members uh, that have spouses that work in other cities outside of the immediate uh, state line area. And uh, for reasons of their own family composition and convenience, those employees have opted to live closer to where their spouse works and then they commute uh, into the city of Beloit and they ask that the standard be changed to accommodate them. Uh, most of the employees live somewhere in the state line area. I don't have a list. I can't tell you how many live within the corporate limits of the city, but most of them do live in the immediate area. All right, additional counselor questions or comments? All right, thank you, uh, Mr. Arft. Why don't we proceed then? We were discussing initially at least uh, 11F, a resolution amending the existing collective bargaining agreement and authorizing a one-year agreement between the City of Beloit and the American Federation of County and Municipal Employees, Local 643. Is there a motion to approve 11F? So moved. Second. Mr. Levy and Mr. Dench, any additional counselor comments or questions? I'll call the question. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Those opposed? Very well. 11G is a resolution amending the existing collective bargaining agreement and authorizing a new one-year agreement between the City of Beloit and the American Federation of County Municipal, uh, State County Municipal Employees, ASME Local 2537. I would assume, uh, Mr. Arf, that you don't have any additional comments that you'd like to make as we go through these individually. You've no, kind of covered the... there are individual questions, I'm okay. happy to try to answer All right. All right. Is there a motion to approve 11G? Ms. DeForest and Ms. Johns, any additional counselor questions or comments? All in favor signify by aye. 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 Those opposed? Very well, motion carries 7 0. 11 H is a resolution amending the existing collective bargaining agreement and authorizing a new one year agreement between the City of Beloit and the International Association of Firefighters, Local 583. Is there a motion to approve 11H? So moved. Second. All right, Mr. Levy and Ms. Johns. 
uh, additional counselor questions or comments? And I'll call the question. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Those opposed? Very well. Motion carries 7 0. Uh, 11i is a resolution amending the exist, existing collective bargaining agreement and authorizing a new one year agreement between the City of Beloit and the Wisconsin Professional Police Association Law Enforcement Employees Relations Division. Uh, is there a motion to, to approve 11i? Move to approve 11i. Right, Mr. Dench, Mr. Haynes, additional counselor questions or comments? All right, all in favor signify by aye. Aye. Those opposed? Very well. Motion carries 7 0. 11 J <clears throat> is a resolution amending the agreement between the City of Beloit and the Beloit Police Supervisors Association, Superv Supervisor Association, Supervisory Officers Relations Division. Uh, is there a motion to approve 11 J? All right, Ms. Second. Johns, and Mr. Haynes, additional counselor questions or comments? All right, I'll call the question. All in favor of 11J signify by aye. 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 Those opposed? Very well, motion carries 7 0. 11K is a resolution amending the existing collective bargaining agreement and authorizing a new one year agreement between the City of Beloit and the Beloit Police Supervisors Association. Supervisory Officers Relations Division. Is there a motion to approve 11K? So moved. Second. All right, Ms. DeForest, Mr. Levy, additional counselor questions or comments? All right, all in favor signify by aye. 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 Those opposed? Very well, motion carries 7 0. 11 L is a resolution authorizing an early retirement incentive program for eligible employees. Mr. York, can you give us the uh, uh, staff report, please? Thank you, Mr. President. Um, the resolution before you this evening is to approve a early retirement uh, program for eligible city employees. This um, proposal is, is also part of our budget package uh, for next year, 2010. Um, the uh, program essentially is to allow employees uh, who meet the following criteria the ability uh, to retire early and have the city uh, pay their health insurance expenses until they're age 65, as well as some additional uh, compensation that they would receive if they uh, accept the program. Um, the criteria was that the employee had to have at least 20 years service with the city and be uh, age 60 by July 1st of next year, 2010, in order to be eligible. We had uh, 11 employees who met the criteria. Uh, we had eight that accepted the uh, proposal. Uh, last Friday was the deadline for them to uh, inform us that they wish to participate in this program. And we've calculated that um, by doing so that we should realize a savings of about $90,000 next year in the uh, 2010 budget. Um, the uh, <clears throat> employees that have accepted the offer, there are some payouts uh, that we'll be making this year in 2009. Um, we will be paying this out of the city's uh, contingency account in the general fund, uh, as well as uh, a couple of the uh, department operating budgets. The total payouts are about $244,000, uh, which includes um, the vacation sick leave that they're entitled to under the current city's personnel policies, as well as the uh, one month uh, salary payout that they'll receive and the uh, health insurance uh, for 2010 for those that will remain on the city's health insurance coverage for next year. Um, the uh, contingency account uh, be about $200,000 coming out of that fund uh, to cover these costs and the remainder will come from the various uh, operating budgets in the police and engineering departments. 
And with that, I'll be glad to answer any questions you may have. Uh, can you indicate again, please, Mr. York, that this is a one-time only offer and uh, we're not necessarily going to be repeating this as we go forward? Well, I don't know if I can guarantee that. I know. I, <laughs> it's not like a blue light special over at Kmart that's going to go on twice a week. You know? This, as far as uh, the, the current plan is, this is a one-time offer. And uh, we don't have any immediate plans to make any uh, similar offer as far as the future. But uh, the future is what the future is. So, you know, so that, that it, could possibly change. If I heard your summary, it's costing us about 244000 and we're going to save next year 90,000 that's correct okay. and the savings really I, I might want to add is coming from some of the positions aren't being filled uh, either immediately or or at all uh, in the upcoming year and that's really where the cost savings is being realized and it'll be year after year with that that's correct yeah. right. mr. Dench okay, um, just to further explain that because it doesn't sound like a very good bargain for uh, taxpayers but some of the expenses associated with the retirement would be paid anyway. Is that not correct? The, the yeah, as, as, as I indicated, the, uh, under the city's personnel uh, policies, uh, all, <clears throat> all employees that retire eligible for uh, vacation payout, whatever accrued vacation that they have, and, uh, and as far as their sick leave up to a certain uh, number of hours that they have accrued, we have a payout that goes into a health savings account uh, on their behalf that they can use for future health care related costs. Uh, so and and they're, everybody's automatically eligible for that. So most, if not all of this, would have been paid at one point or another. That's true. It's just that we're retiring a, That's true. a larger group all at once and generating this savings right. and this one time expense. And then the, the $90,000 a year savings, it's estimated, then would be extended out over subsequent years. So right. we would continue to realize that savings as the years go by, correct? Correct. Mr. Hurst? Uh, also, I add that part of the reason we asked Council to, for permission to offer this was that there were a number of employees in positions that we had slated for elimination in the budget. And many of those uh, uh, people that accepted this uh, pre either freed up a position or were in a position that is still going to be eliminated uh, January 1. So there's also a, a huge savings here in potential layoff expenses for the payout of unemployment compensation going through at least 26 weeks, if not more of next year. And the city is directly billed for all those costs. We would have had to pay all that money out of next year's operating budget. So there are some um, intangible or some additional savings that accrue to us as a result of that. And when we went through the numbers this morning, we just got these today because Friday was the deadline. We just got the last ones uh, in. The additional cost for the incentive we offered was $51,000. And we're making a one-time contribution of $79,000 into the, the group health insurance fund out of this year's budget to cover the cost of those benefits. Uh, so a, a lot of that money, it, it, you know, again, uh, 51000 of it would have been, uh, was related to the, to directly to the additional benefits we offered. And about 111000 is the regular uh, payout that would have occurred when these people retired anyway. They're all 60 or over, so we were going to pay that sometime over the next three or four years. But by offering the incentive, we kind of compressed the timeline. We're offering it all at once, and that's why you're getting a bigger number. And the $90,000 is a pretty good number. We don't know going forward if that will hold every year. But essentially, we've cut about $90,000 permanently out of our operating budget as a result of the early retirement program, and that will be in place for the next several years. So it did work very well for us. We, we had a very good response, as you heard from Paul, uh, 8 of 11, and a number of the positions that we hoped would take advantage of this did, and that saved a lot of unemployment compensation cost as well for next year. Thank you. All right, additional counselor questions or comments uh, for Mr. York or Mr. Arft? Mr. York, looks like you wanted to say something else. Okay. Oh. I'm, I'm done. Okay. <laughs> is, is there a motion to approve? Uh, 11 uh, L. I move to approve. Second. Mr. Haynes, Ms. Johns, 
Any additional counselor questions or comments? I'll call Congratulations it. to those that are retiring. <laughs> all, right. all right, all in favor signify by aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Well, motion carries 7-0. 11M is a resolution authorizing 2010 schedule of fees, charges, and rates for the city of Beloit, Wisconsin. Mr. York. Uh, another component to our uh, budget package uh, that you're approving this evening uh, is the fee resolution. These are the fees that have been established uh, by the various departments to cover the cost of uh, some of the services that are provided within the departments, um, you know, for inspection fees, what have you, um, permit fees. Um, it's quite comprehensive. Uh, I think probably the one that will impact uh, the citizens uh, in the city uh, more than others is the uh, solid waste removal fees. Those are increasing uh, next year. They're going from $11.50 per month to $13 per month. Uh, we're also increasing the uh, yard waste uh, sticker program that's increasing 25 cents from a dollar and a quarter to a dollar fifty. Uh, those are little stickers that you put on the bags for your uh, leaves, grass clippings, what have you. And another change that will be impacting the solid waste customers are the number of set outs that uh, you're allowed to put out uh, that's covered under the basic uh, monthly fee. Uh, that's going to be reduced from the current number of 10 uh, containers that you're eligible to, to set out at no additional cost down to five. So uh, anybody who sets out six or seven uh, containers, uh, they're going to get billed a uh, dollar apiece for each container in excess of five. Uh, so, so there will be some additional charges that will be levied as a result of that. Um, with that, uh, again, it's, uh, this is a quite comprehensive resolution. If uh, you have any questions on any specific fees, I'll be glad to try to answer those. All right, questions of Mr. York? I'll entertain a motion to approve 11M. I would move to approve 11M. Right, Mr. Dench? Second. And Ms. Johns? Any additional counselor questions or comments? Ms. DeForest? Um, I don't know, maybe Dave, if you could answer this question. I was just wondering about the pretreatment hazmat fees. Um, we, had, we had quite a, a number of fees that will be incurred for the first time this year. Is that because of the, the changes in the state billing system in terms of passing on some costs to us for treatment and Are these the water resource? Yes, charges? section six. What those fees are, are uh, fees if we have to respond to an event, mm -hmm. then we're going to bill the uh, property owners to, to recover the cost of our cost for, you know, responding. Okay. That's all that is. Okay. We never had it before because uh, we tried to work with that and we've noticed more and of course our cost to provide that service has gone up for the disposal of any materials and things like that. So we felt it was necessary to, uh, Bill the company or whatever property owner had a, a spill at. Okay, thank you. Either Mr. York or Mr. Bots, could you briefly explain the increase in the uh, dollar eleven dollars to uh, thirteen or eleven fifty rather to thirteen the tipping fee issue from the state and why that's driving the big increase? Sure, um, <clears throat> you're exactly right. Uh, one of the the biggest reasons that we uh, had to increase the solid waste fee for, for customers is the fact that the state, when they approved their budget this past spring, uh, increased the tipping fee, which is what we have to pay the landfill when we take the trash there and dispose of it. Uh, they increased that substantially. Uh, it's, it's going to amount to about a, an additional $120,000 in added expense. Uh, to the city as a result of that each year. Uh, there was no way that we could absorb that additional expense with, within our current budget, so it, it led to an uh, increase uh, in the solid waste charge as a result of that. 
it, it's more or less a pass through from us, you know, to the customer because of the action that the state took, you know, against the city. Um, in addition to that, I might also add, uh, you know, we we were receiving uh, revenue also from our recycling materials. We, you know, had a market for some of that stuff at one point, um, particularly the glass and, and the, the metals that we collect. In uh, the last uh, year or so, we, there, we haven't been receiving any payments uh, for those materials. So that also contributed to the need to increase the monthly charge is to make up that lost revenue uh, from the recycling materials too. All right, any additional counselor questions or comments for uh, Mr. York? Marty. Well, Marty, I'm sorry, Mr. Dench, I'm sorry. Uh, just one, I know I've asked this question before, but I don't think it's been asked in a public meeting. And that is with the yard waste stickers, they're essentially like forever stamps. Uh, people don't have to go out and buy new ones when no. the rate goes up. No. Uh, if they still have older stickers, they, they they're they're good the for us. They're like the forever stamps you get at the post right. office. So. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, is is there a motion to approve 11 M? Oh, I did that right. I'm sorry. Thank thank you. I'm confused here. All right, I'll call the question. Uh, all in favor of 11 M? Please signify by aye. 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 Those opposed. Very well, motion carries seven zero. 11N is a resolution approving the operating budgets, appropriating funds, and levying property taxes necessary for the operation and administration of the City of Beloit for the year 2010, including the 2010 capital improvement budget, the City, or rather, the, yeah, the Beloit Public Library budget, and further authorizing the City Treasurer to spread the City property tax along with the appropriations certified for the other jurisdictions upon the current tax roll of the city. Mr. York, Mr. Arft. Uh, this is, I guess, the biggie resolution on the agenda tonight. This is uh, before the council uh, to approve the uh, budget that was presented to the council in, on October 5th uh, for 2010. Um, we, uh, we did meet uh, in an all-day workshop on the 19th of October and we also had a public hearing that evening. Uh, there have been some very uh, minor adjustments made to the budget since it was presented to the council back uh, on the 5th of October and uh, we handed out a little uh, worksheet uh, earlier this evening. Uh, this is a summary of the budget, you know, where we are today uh, with the changes that have occurred uh, since the budget was originally submitted to the council back uh, the 1st of October. Uh, the total budget for all funds, uh, $92,040,000, uh, $40,255. It's an increase of about $11.8 million, or decrease, I'm sorry, of $11.8 million over the 2009 budget, uh, which is about uh, 11 0.4% uh, reduction from the current year. The biggest uh, reason for that, as you'll see, uh, is in our capital improvements budget. Uh, we had quite a number of major projects uh, scheduled for 2009, which will not be recurring uh, next year. So that reduced uh, the capital improvement budget almost uh, $15 million itself uh, for next year. Uh, the general fund budget, which is the budget that, that covers most of the city's uh, operations, uh, such as uh, police, fire, public works, um, it's uh, increasing very slightly. Uh, uh, $43,000 essentially is the increase next year. Uh, it's you may as well say it's a it's a baseline budget. You know, from the current year budget, there there's essentially no increase at all. Um, our debt service budget. For next year is increasing uh, about 1.2 million dollars. Uh, that's the 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 money that's used to fund payments uh, for principal and interest on the money that the city has borrowed, uh, primarily for capital improvement projects. Uh, our special revenue funds are increasing about 1.8 million uh, to 14.7 million dollars for 2010. Uh, these are primarily or 
or tax increment districts are included in the special revenue funds. Um, so that's really to cover uh, expenses related to the operation of those tax increment districts. Uh, our enterprise funds are decreasing about a million dollars. Uh, that's primarily because of the uh, payoff of the uh, bonds for the sewage treatment plant this year. So we won't have that debt service recurring next year, uh, which is uh, good news for the wastewater fund. Uh, the total budget for all the enterprise funds is about $17 million. That includes our water utility, our wastewater utility, uh, the golf course, the transit system. Um, the ambulance service that the city provides is, is accounted for as an enterprise operation. Uh, our cemeteries that we operate are enterprise funds. Uh, so again, the total budget on those operations is uh, roughly $17 million. Uh, internal service funds, uh, the city has uh, uh, several of those. The, the primary one is the uh, health insurance fund that we operate. Um, we are still continuing to see increased costs within our health insurance fund. Our uh, consultant that we use suggested that we consider increasing our rates for next year by 45 percent, which is unattainable. I mean, there's, there's no way possible that we could have afforded that. We do have a 20 percent increase in premiums built into the budget for next year. Uh, so the increase in internal service funds is about $874,000 for next year. Uh, and again, our lastly, our capital improvements budget, uh, $13.3 million. It's uh, quite a bit less than, than the current year budget. Uh, we if, also... If I can uh, interrupt you, Mr. Rick, that's primarily sure. the absence of the library and what else? Uh, the big one there was the uh, gateway project. Uh, that was... 11, 12 million dollars. Uh, Capital by, projects? Yeah. yeah the, the two differences here, the library was in the prior year. The two differences mm -hmm. in 09 were the utility improvements. We had about six million dollars appropriated in there uh, for improvements of the wastewater treatment plant. We deferred that work. Now, the other big project was Gateway Boulevard Extension. And that's the one that's under construction now. That's, that was a 10 million dollar magnitude project. So there were two huge projects that came mm -hmm. out of the CIP for. For okay. Thank. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt your your presentation. No problem. Lastly, uh, I, I'll, I'll wrap it up with uh, the tax levy, uh, the property tax levy that has been proposed uh, as part of the budget for next year uh, is uh, an increase of about 7.4 percent, uh, 876 thousand uh, dollars, which will. Uh, generate a total city tax levy of about $12.7 million for next year. Uh, not all of that goes to our general fund. Uh, around $6 million of that, uh, you know, a little bit less than half is for the general fund. Um, the debt service fund is the next uh, large source uh, that's, that's used for the tax levy, about $4.3 million of that is used to make our debt service payments. Uh, the library is funded out of the tax levy at uh, $1.7 million. Uh, and then the next largest one is uh, the uh, money that's used for the transit system, about a half million dollars. And then we have several uh, fairly uh, minor grant programs, and we levy for the city's uh, portion or share of the grant uh, is included in the tax levy. Uh, the tax rate will increase about 75 cents per thousand uh, to eight dollars and 83 cents per thousand will be the city tax rate uh, that generates uh, roughly if you have a, a hundred thousand dollar home in Beloit your tax bill will go up about seventy five dollars just the city portion for next year uh, just to put that in some perspective so um, again uh, I'll sort of echo uh, some of Mr. Arf's comments. This is very, was a very difficult budget year. Uh, we spent just an unbelievable amount of time working on uh, this project, and uh, I'm certainly pleased that it's over with this evening, hopefully. 
But if you have any questions, I'll certainly be glad to try to address those. Could you give us a, a view from a little bit, a couple steps back? I know the council has dealt with this on a number of occasions, certainly not uh, as, as closely perhaps as yourself or your staff or Mr. Arf, but can you take a half a step back and, and tell the public how all these different pieces have had to come together? The agreements with the unions, the early retirement, the, the uh, elimination of a couple positions, the tax increase, and you can't focus, to get this picture correct, you can't focus on just one thing and say, oh my goodness, four positions are eliminated, oh my goodness, 75 cents more per thousand, oh my goodness, the police are doing this or the firefighters are doing that or ask me to, you got to look at the whole picture for this to make sense. Can you kind of give us an overview of that? Um, I'll certainly try. I don't know, Larry may want to. Uh, Larry right, may want to jump in. Like Maybe you can. Me. All right. Maybe well, let's. I, 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 I guess you know people, people at home or people who might might read about this and oh my goodness, these people are making these big decisions here. It's taken us an hour and a half. It, it, they got to understand that, that you've been at it for six months. We've been at it for a good long period of time, yeah. and just kind of put these pieces together. How these things have all had to work together for us. Yeah, we've been at this for four months, and as you say, this was a comprehensive strategy. To get this budget balanced. Uh, we have a very, very detailed hands-on budget preparation process. Uh, Mr. Yark, myself, and a couple of other key staffers create uh, or form actually a budget committee, including the assistant city manager. There's a couple of his people. We, we go through every line item, every program, uh, every aspect of the budget uh, is absolutely dissected, and, de and department and division directors are grilled on every piece of it. Uh, when we get through with that process, we have a good, tight, firm budget. There's no, there's no fat in it. There's nothing extra in it. That's why we maintain that master contingency account in case something comes up during the year. Well, we did that process again this year, and back in June or early July, we got that process done. The general fund was $2.6 million out of balance, and there are no revenue sources available. There's no other forms of taxation. Uh, we did, you know, the normal little fee increases. So that, that's how far in the hole of this thing was. It was almost 10 percent of the general fund that were out of balance. So this, this wasn't going to be easy. There was not going to be any one single strategy that we were going to be able to walk in and say, oh, no problem, we'll renegotiate this or we'll cut a couple positions here and this thing's going to balance. So we set about doing a comprehensive list of items and if you remember back on the 5th of October, we showed you the list and all the things we cut out on the expenditure side, uh, what we did on the, on the, on the uh, income side to try to generate as much revenue as we reasonably could for uh, the general fund. Uh, and then, of course, the, really the, the key to all of this was the renegotiation of the labor contracts. If that had not uh, succeeded, uh, the hole would have still been very deep and, as I indicated, a lot more serious cuts would have had been made. And I think. When you look at this budget, uh, you can see where all these pieces fit together. Uh, the early retirement program saved almost $100,000. Uh, it allowed us to open several positions that are still slated. There's four full-time positions being eliminated as a part of this budget. Uh, most of those uh, positions were dealt with through the early retirement program. So uh, and, and we avoided layoffs. We, we, we saved a lot of money on unemployment and, and insurance payouts. So there's a lot of little value-add things that occurred. And this comprehensive strategy all came together. And yes, unfortunately, it did include a property tax increase. But there was no way that this budget was going to happen unless all of the stakeholders contributed something to make this work. Uh, if we'd gone to the unions and said, look, collective bargaining units, you've got to cover this deficit. We're, we, we're not going to charge the residents anymore for any of these services. They'd have thrown their hands up and said, "We're not going to, you know, we're not going to do that. You're not going to do this on our backs, you know. And they, if the other stakeholders aren't willing to contribute something to the process, we're not going to give it all up, okay? And conversely, I don't think you could go to your property taxpayers and say, "Hey, gee, I'm sorry, guys, we got contracts and our employees are due a raise, and we got to give them more money, and we just can't do anything else but tax you." So this was hopefully a reasonably crafted compromise where all the major stakeholders gave up something. And at the end of the day, we had a balanced budget 
and, and the great strength of this budget, and I hope it never proves to be a weakness, the great strength of this budget is despite the fact that all the stakeholders had to give up something uh, to make this work, all of the critical services, all the facilities, all the wonderful quality of life amenities that make Beloit special are all still in this budget and still funded. And that's the real strength of this process, that we were able to do this without going in and hurting any of those key critical services. And I say I hope it doesn't become a weakness because we still have a pretty heavy uh, base budget, uh, if you will, that we have to carry each year to continue to provide all those services. And as we've discussed, doing the two-year labor contracts has made it possible for us to do the 2011 budget unless something really unanticipated occurs, uh, we think that budget will come together as well. And that takes us out to 2012, and that in essence is the new day. That we'll have a new governor by then, there'll be a whole new state budget process, uh, the labor contracts will all be open, we don't know what the economy will look like by 2012, uh, but whatever it is, we'll deal with it when we get there. Uh, I think the important point here is that 2010, and we think 2011, uh, are pretty solid and pretty firm, and we've got a good budget going forward. We finished this up. There were a, we actually used no fund balance at all for 2010 in the general fund. Uh, that was an incredible accomplishment. Uh, it again, strengthens the city's overall financial position, and it positions the community to deal with the 2011 budget year as well. So I hope that answers your question. That's kind of a long-winded dissertation, but. I think it is an important point as to how we got here, what the budget means, and how all the stakeholders are being asked to give a little to make this work. Two, 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 two points. Uh, uh, I don't know that it's common knowledge or made to the news or the, the print media or others, but we did have a reaffirmation in our bond issue of two weeks ago of our A-plus rating. And if you indicate, and as you indicate, with no diminution of the general reserves that ought to preserve that rating going to the next borrowing cycle. Yes, the unemployment rate uh, is coming down now, fortunately, and hopefully that will continue. Uh, the economy does show some signs of firming, and uh, uh, we were very, very pleased to get an A-plus bond rating just a couple weeks ago when we did that refinancing. So. Mm -hmm. Are there additional counselor questions uh, or comments? If not, I'd entertain a motion to approve 11 and uh, Mr. Newham. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I guess for uh, the city manager, uh, uh, over your uh, entire career in city government, how would you compare this uh, budget uh, cycle as far as trying to budget in? in uh, it's, it's, it's probably tied uh, with the worst. Uh, I, th I think maybe uh, one that was even more difficult because the community I was in at the time had a, did not have a good tax base was. Uh, 82 and 83 when we were in the depths of that early 80s recession when the feds raised interest rates to 15 16 percent and shut the entire economy down and that was very very difficult uh, uh, but certainly this one would rank right up there with that uh, that budget cycles being the most difficult that we've undertaken thank you mr. Forrest um, I, I have concerns that the shot spotter technology is still included in the CIP um, quarter of a million dollar price tag and the debt service will be paying on that could translate into an officer position in the future. Um, I would like to entertain a motion that the uh, resolution be passed with the elimination of the shot spotter as included in the CIP budget. Are, are you making that motion then yourself? Yes, I am. All right. Is there a second for Ms. DeForest's motion? Is there a second for Ms. DeForest's motion? A second. All right, Mr. Haynes. Discussion on the motion and the second. Mr. Levy. Um, just a quick summary. I, I, I voiced this at the uh, budget hearing, and I'll, I'll voice it again here. Um, Sheila, I fully understand your, your concern um, that you said it's a resource that really has not proven that we haven't caught anybody um, using it. Um, I think there's a lot of tools that the police department has that has not allowed us to catch a lot of individuals. But however, uh, the case with this one is it has proven to save lives. Uh, 
And I think we all talked about, I think the uh, interim chief talked about the individual on Swiss Track Alley. I think it was stated in the paper that if it was not for Shot Spotter, that this individual would not have been, would not be here today uh, had they not been able to pinpoint exactly where the shot comes from. We're still new with this um, instrument. I think it's proven itself. Um, we hear citizens say we need to do all that we can to uh, deter crime um, in the city. Uh, I think the police are always looking for resources to assist them in that. Um, and, I, and I think that any time you have a device that's going to allow them to do their job quickly um, without driving all over the city to find out where a gunshot may have come from and it can pinpoint exactly where to go, I think down the road it's going to prove itself worthy. I mean, I understand your concerns, but when you have citizens saying uh, that we need a, a safer community, and by no means is Beloit a dangerous community. I mean, I think the chief is, uh, is working on our um, report so we can exactly see where we are, but I don't think that um, it, it's as dangerous as a lot of people want it to be. But I think this device will help us um, further control our crime. And the biggest thing is, uh, it, it's saving, I mean, it saves a life. I mean, do you put a price tag on someone's life? Uh, that's the biggest thing that I have. And I had the opportunity to speak with that young lady's parents just a couple of days after our meeting. And they said they would be happy to sit down and talk with you and tell you how appreciative that they are that we did spend the money to get this shot spotter uh, instrument because it did save their daughter's life. And they said at any given time they would, they would welcome the opportunity to sit down and, and defend this uh, piece of equipment that we have. <clears throat> Mr. Forrest. I, I guess I still am not convinced that the shot spotter technology is what saved this young woman's life, that her life would have been lost without the shot spotter technology. And I am concerned about the cost value of this quarter of a million dollars. We have to pay a annual service fee and the debt service. Those are one or two police officers um, that we're giving up for a piece of technology that I'm not sure has proven itself. Um, I don't see the harm in waiting a year to look at it closer. We, we still have it on one side of the city. I'd say we wait and look at it closer before we institute it on the other side of the city. All right. Well, I would uh, uh, point out that my understanding is that the authorization for placing it in the capital improvements budget does not mean that we're authorizing spending it and that we had a commitment or a comment from the administration that before we did get to the point of authorizing it, they would be back before us with the specific resolution authorizing its purchase. And at that point, we would have the opportunity to ask for more detailed and specific uh, effectiveness or utilization or the, 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 the P's and Q's, if you would. I think that putting it in the budget at this point does not mean that we're authorizing it's being spent this week or next week or at the start of 2010. Mr. Arft? I was just going to comment. We uh, agreed, based on some earlier budget discussions uh, <laughs> relative to the technology, to actually defer the purchase uh, for now. Uh, we would uh, wait until a technology upgrade is completed at the dispatch center, and then the cars will have this technology on their mobile data terminals right inside of each uh, squad vehicle. And then we'd like to run with that for several months. <clears throat> and see what data that produces and see how we respond uh, before we would even make a decision as to whether or not we were going to buy the next shot spotter. And if we do, then we would have to come back to city council first and we would make a presentation to council. If you concur, then we would proceed with the purchase. If you do not, we would not proceed with the purchase and the deployment of the technology. All right. Any other councilor comments or questions on the motion to take the shot spotter out of the capital improvement budget? All right, I'll call the question. All in favor of the motion signify by aye. All opposed, the same sign. Aye. aye. So it's what, zero in favor, seven against? All right. All right, uh, let's have a motion then to approve the budget itself, 11N. Is there such a motion? I would move that we approve 11N. Mr. Dench? Second. And Mr. Levy. All right, any further counselor comments or discussion? Mr. Dench. Uh, since this is the last opportunity we'll have to make any public comment on this, I would like to say that I, I want to first of all congratulate the staff on the hard work they put into it. Uh, I also want to add my personal thanks to the bargaining units who stepped up to the plate and accepted something that I'm sure was a very difficult decision for them and one that they did not take lightly nor gladly. 
uh, but it certainly uh, went a long way toward helping us overcome some of the challenges here. Uh, there were a number of things that worked in the favor. One was was the pay freeze over the next two years, which will make next year's budget that more stable and easier to plan for. Uh, we've had a reduction in personnel, uh, but the things going against us were things like the increases in the tipping fee by the state, increased health costs, reductions in state aid. I mean, people may be wondering if we've got a fairly stable general fund and a total overall budget that's actually down, why are the taxes going to have to go up a little bit? And that's because the numbers are just working against us. Uh, we have less revenue from other sources, increased cost in other areas, and, um, you know, frankly, this just wasn't enough. And to, to cut enough out to reduce that increase to zero would have actually been more reckless than the modest increase that we're proposing because it would have meant the elimination of a number of very important services, and I don't think the citizens would have stood for it, quite frankly. Um, I don't feel as comfortable as I'd like over passing a budget that shows an increase like this. We've had very stable budgets over the entire time I've been on the council. Uh, but that notwithstanding, uh, the staff has made a very sincere effort uh, to be guardian, guardians of the public trust and have done their best to bring forward a budget which not only preserves uh, the relatively stable tax base we'd have, but more importantly, preserves the services that people have come to expect and the quality of those. Uh, for that reason, I will be voting for this budget. Um, and again, I'd like to thank the staff for all their efforts and again also the bargaining units. Thank you very much for stepping up and agreeing to that. All right. Thank you, Mr. Dench. Additional counselor questions or comments? I'd like to join uh, Mr. Dench in, in complimenting the, the staff and Manager Arft, but especially complimenting and thanking the bargaining units as he's done. Um, I guess the way I describe this budget is if everyone is asked to say ouch, maybe we got it as close to right as we can. Uh, ouch to cutting some positions uh, from the city corporation. Ouch to the increase in taxes. Ouch to the unions who had to give something back. Ouch to the service level that's down a little bit. Um, we've made some reference to the potential issues coming up next year and the year after. Uh, it's clear that the trends and the ability and willingness of individuals to pay for a level of service that they're now receiving uh, are, 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 are bumping into each other. There was some suggestion that uh, came out during the process of the potential for closing the Kruger pool. Um, $70,000, uh, not a tremendous amount. We were able to keep it in this year. Uh, but I would urge those that care passionately about the pool, for example, to consider forming a uh, Friends of Kruger Pool type organization to help support that facility that they care so much about and that adds so much to the uh, quality of life in the city. It's perhaps at some point we may have to walk away from that uh, commitment. I don't know when, when or if that will occur, but as things get squeezed tighter and tighter, um, some of those sorts of things maybe have to be looked at by uh, future councils. So. I, again, I think perhaps if, if we all are asked to give up a little bit and all say, ouch, uh, we're making the best of a bad situation. I don't look forward to a, a, a tax increase, uh, but there's no other way that uh, with all these other pieces out there coming together that it could be avoided, in my view. So additional counselor questions or comments? All right, I'll call the question. All in favor of 11N, please signify by aye. 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 Those opposed? Very well, motion carries 7-0. The motion for adjournment is in order. So moved. Mr. Levy. Second. All right, Mr. Johns, we're adjourned. Thank you all.